Hey there, fellows. Okay, we have prepared something rather interesting for this episode. Now, before, you would have seen us do a few things with hydraulics, using them to lift and to extend a car. That we got to work, and during one of those early videos, I mentioned that we have a gear type pump. I had no idea then whether it was an 80 or a 100, but after cleaning it, we found the marking, and it's a 100. It is a really serious piece of kit, which can pump large quantities of oil and generate a healthy amount of pressure. So we already had the pump, right? And to complement it, I went out and bought this lovely hydraulic motor. It is such a cool thing. You know what we should do? Let's go ahead and disconnect the rear wheels from the transmission, fit the pump, route a few tubes, get this drive mechanism on, and make us a lot with a hydraulic mover. Or, I don't know, hydraulic drive? I guess that's a better way to call it. Now, we are still actively contemplating how to go about this, since there are certain difficulties involved. The thing is that the manual for this pump says that it's rated at up to 60 kilowatts. So you basically need an engine to get it to spin. I'm afraid that the engine on this lot um, simply isn't going to have enough power. But then again, this unit is only going to spin at like 1900 revs or thereabouts, while the lot motor will happily go up to four and a half or even five. Hopefully over-revving the thing isn't going to be the end of the world. Anyway, the engine easily goes up to four and a half or five grand, and the main question I'm asking myself is where to mount this. One option would be to go the same route as with that high-pressure fuel pump, as in hook it up to the timing mechanism. We'll get an underdrive effect, a twofold decrease in the rotational speed. We'll have a smaller sprocket on the crankshaft and a bigger one on the pump itself. In theory, that's going to double the power and cut the revs in half. But then there is another question. At such a power rating and with this sort of chain, also with the pulley being held on by a single tab compared to the many splines on this, are we going to see stuff falling apart? It's really hard to say. Another option would be removing the prop shaft and mounting it all next to the gearbox. But if we go that route, why would we even need a gearbox? So none of us have any clue what to do. We've yet to come up with a good solution. But I mean, in any case, we have to think of something. At the end of the day, no matter where we decide to place the equipment, be it in the engine bay or underneath the car, if something doesn't work out, we can always just redo it, right? The motor definitely needs to be sitting next to the axle. And as for the pump? I suggest we put it right here. So the pump is going to be mounted inside the engine bay. From here we'll route a few hoses to the back. We get the whole thing up and running. And from there we start the engine, hit the gas and get the liquid flowing. Without a clutch we're going to have to fit some valves, aren't we? Yeah, this is going to be pretty damn difficult. But I mean this should also be a lot of fun. So let's make us a lot of with hydraulic drive, shall we? Alright, let's do this. We've got a special merch offer for you, fellows, to brighten the mood in these turbulent times. Starting today, we'll be offering a mystery gift box. When purchasing the box, you're guaranteed to receive a certain selection of stuff from our shop, as well as the chance to win something big. You spend a fixed $30 price for the box, and you're guaranteed to receive a Garage 54 mug, a pair of socks, a sticker, an air freshener for your car, as well as a key fob. One out of ten buyers will be sent an expensive gift on top of that, which could be a cap, t-shirt, hoodie, or a document holder. So we'll be putting something expensive into one out of every ten boxes. If you'd like to support our channel and try your luck, there's gonna be a link in the video description. Replacing a prop shaft with a hydraulic drive. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. This is starting to get interesting. We've decided to mount the pump right here. Yeah, and you might have noticed that we've brought in a different guinea pig. That wagon we'll be using for something entirely different, and so we've replaced it with this. It's got an 06 engine, which is good for what we have in mind. Now, we did slightly change the concept. 
At the very start of this, we were considering mounting the pump right next to the gearbox in order to be able to shift gears. But now, after giving it a bit of thought, it does seem kind of weird. I mean, there really is no good reason for mounting the pump after the gearbox. And so we've decided to place it right here. Just like with the high-pressure pump from a different video, this will be driven by the crankshaft via a chain. Here you can see we've put together a bracket in order for the pump to securely sit in place. And it will allow for moving the pump around and adjusting the tension of the chain. We can do whatever we want with it. Now I just need to secure the frame to make sure it has no movement in it whatsoever. Right here you'll notice that we've tack welded on a metal retainer. That's there to keep the pump at a stable angle. What we need to make here is an additional frame to keep it from turning, because I don't think this one is going to be enough. Now the idea was to have a direct connection, right? For the pump to feed directly into the drive mechanism. But since we need the car to be able to idle while we are not going anywhere, we went ahead and installed this distributor box in the cabin. It's also of the type you'd find on an excavator. Now I reckon one thing we really gotta try to... I still haven't quite figured out the drive, it being something I've never dealt with. Now from what I've learned poking around the internet, apparently this is a reverse displacement unit that gives you left-right movement. However, there is an arrow on the housing that shows you the direction of rotation, and it doesn't quite suit us. It seems to go counterclockwise, when we need it to go clockwise for the car to move forward. Anyway, we'll figure that out a bit later, but first we need to secure all of this. After that, the interesting stuff begins. Right, enough talk, time to get back to work. Okay, we've connected the hoses, made a flange. Now we just need to check to see which way it rotates, so that we get this on right and not have a car that drives backwards. How do we need it to rotate? I think it's counterclockwise, right? Does anybody remember which way the prop shaft is supposed to spin? Start it. Well, it seems to be spinning the right way. Wait, was that the car stalling? Now we good. I wanted to see whether I could hold it in place. Open the valve a bit more. You can open it a bit more. Fantastic. You can switch it off. It's hard to say what the rev count is, but it seems to be spinning fast. Will it have enough torque to get the diff to rotate, though? If we were to look up... Okay, so it's not written on there. In theory, it should be enough to propel the car. So let's get this mounted, get everything connected, and see if the car drives. Let's do this. Okay, everything seems to have turned out quite well. The hydraulic motor is in place. We're looking good. 
We've done all of the welding, we've secured the whole thing. And now let's see how it's gonna work. Fire it up. You'll notice that we're not running a prop shaft. Isn't that nice? Look at that. Well, it runs, and it even spins in the right direction. Okay, let's bring it down and take this outside. I'd better open this up gradually. Come on now. And we're off. Let's try that one more time. Come on. Let's go, come on. Seriously, what the... Say what? The chain is skipping teeth? Must be under a lot of load. We should tighten it then. Okay, we had a minor setback. Not quite enough revs. I should give it some more. Seems about right. Alright, let's try this out. I'm gonna take it easy. Okay, I can feel it loading up. Come on now. You got this little lot of engine, come on. Come on now. Here we go. Whoa there! This is very interesting. I probably should have driven the other way. Come on now! Can you tell the boys to give me a push? Give me a push! Come on! And it's stalled. Come on now. The road is also a bit... They haven't removed the snow for a while. The car is barely able to move. I mean, we were already having trouble in the garage. As for what I just did... I'm at full throttle. 
and I'm modulating using this lever. Okay, apparently the car has overheated. And I've only driven 20 meters, so this leaves us in a rather interesting place. The lotta motor is obviously not enough. As for the hydraulic drive thing, it is under tremendous load, and with us having bolted it directly to the axle, well... Remember how we ran it while the engine of the car was idling? It was rotating at a pretty high speed. I guess we have to figure out... how to ease the stress off of this, so that the engine has less trouble getting the pump to spin. Because on an excavator you have a diesel engine, not to mention a bunch of shafts, transfer cases and such, but even on an excavator, if the bucket were to get caught, the diesel engine would also struggle and emit massive plumes of black smoke. And that's a diesel. Now imagine how good the gasoline-powered Lada engine in this car feels trying to run that thing. Seriously, it was barely even hanging in there. Which means we have to think about reduction, most likely on the axle side of things. Because with the hydraulic drive spinning so fast, and with it providing no means of adjustment, yeah, it all sort of makes sense now. Anyway, we need to come up with some sort of... transfer case or perhaps a reduction gear solution for the problem. I'm sure we'll think of something to... reduce the rotational speed, to ease the load off the motor, and to get rid of those awful noises. Well, there you have it. But hey, I mean, this was a learning experience, and so I'd say we're good. All of this is totally new to us, and so it's all good. I was only able to make it this far before the engine overheated, and overall, I mean, it's a lot of work to even push the car forward. And on its own, the hydraulic drive was having an unbelievably hard time getting it to move. But hey, no worries. We'll revise a few things here and there and just keep right on trying. Anyway, fellas, that is all I have for you. Watch us, send in your suggestions, comment. Maybe share your thoughts as to how we can get this to work like it should. This cannot be complicated. I'm fairly sure that we missed something that is really obvious. So yeah, let us know what that might be, and let's work out a solution together. Okay, that's all I got for you. Catch you guys later.